you're thinking about getting into the bait making business. That's awesome. Let me save you some time and save you some money so you don't do what I did. Meaning I wasted a lot of time and I wasted a lot of money buying things that I probably didn't need and was never gonna use or buying the wrong plastisol, buying, buying the wrong colorant and so forth and so on. So I'm gonna give you a couple of things that I would probably do different if I were to start now knowing what I know, you know. Now, I did a lot of research as much as I possibly could. Um, now, in this regards, I'm talking about soft plastics. I'm not talking about crappie jigs, meaning hair jigs, feather jigs, and so forth and so on. That will be the next episode. But why I keep looking that way, I don't know. It's all good. There's, there's nothing over there but a green screen, see? I don't know. Anyway, so as I was saying, I'm going to give you a list of things. So I'll present you with the list right off the rip. So you don't have to watch the whole video. You don't have to fast forward. Uh, the minimum things that you will need to start making soft plastics, whether it's bass baits or if it's crappie baits or if it's ice fishing baits. I'll give you the list right off the rip. That way you don't have to watch the whole video. But if you want a little bit of advice on why I chose what I chose, why I wouldn't choose, and what I would do or would not do, stick around. That's right. So before I start going down the list of the things that you may need, that you will need, to start making soft plastics. Um, no particular order. I'm gonna try to make this video short, sweet, and to the point, but there are companies out there that sell starter kits where uh, they're gonna give you the um, Pyrex cup, they're gonna give you the uh, a, a mold, probably one mold, um, I don't think the injector comes with it. So you're going to have to buy the injector separate. Um, so depending on what company you buy your starter kit from will dictate what's in that starter kit. Cause some starter kits, you'll get a gallon of plastisol too, you know, and some starter kits you want some starter kits, you'll get the injector, some starter kits you want. It just depends on how much you pay for it at the end of the day. And how far down the rabbit hole you want to go so some of these kits start out at like 69 dollars and they go all the way up to 200 dollars. so i'm quite sure i'll i'll put the names up on the list um so you can do your own research uh because i got in right at the end of covid so prices were decent uh, do your due diligence and do your own research based on the information that I give you because some of the stuff I just settled for because I got tired of looking uh, because it's a lot of information out there. Uh, so before I talk about the molds and the plastisol and the colorants and the additives that you're going to put into your mixture to make your soft plastics, um, I'm going to talk about simple things. Temperature probe, okay? You can use infrared, you know. I don't recommend spending a whole lot of money on the temperature probe or the infrared gun. I think this one is like 40 bucks at Home Depot, but I think you can get them cheaper than that, um, either from Amazon, because I know some people don't like shopping at the big box stores. Some people don't like shopping at Amazon, but well, however you get your temperature pro, it's paramount that you get one because the plastisol has to reach a certain temperature before it plasticizes and before you can actually shoot the mold. If it's too cold, it's going to be a gooey mess. If it's too hot, you're going to burn it and then you can smell it. Okay, so this is a Weber 
uh, barbecue temperature probe. So you want to get one that has a high temperature range and the infrared works just as well. So I cannot stress this enough. Probably the most important thing that you're going to use, that you're going to need to use is a notebook. Keep track of all your recipes because if you want your colors to stay consistent, regardless of whether you make baits today or you make the same bait 10 days from now and you want it look, you want it to look exactly the same, write that recipe down, write it down. I don't care how young you are, how, how much you think you can remember. Trust me, one teaspoon or just a pinch more of colorant, it's going to change the color of the bait. And if you're planning on selling them, your clients, they're going to know. Because if they have leftover baits from what they bought from you previously, they're going to hold on to them and they're going to compare. People do that. And crappie fishermen, and I'm speaking for myself, we are some of the funniest fishermen when it comes to size and color. If it's off by just a little bit, we will not use it. Some of us won't use it, you know. We want our baits to be consistent just because. And I understand that, you know, consistency is the key. So write it down, notebook and a do not write it in ink <laughs> because you'll have a lot of scratches. Be able to erase your your recipe if you tweak it because you're going to tweak your recipe as time goes on. The next important thing, your Pyrex cup. It doesn't necessarily have to be Pyrex. It just has to be microwave safe. And this one is Anchor and Pyrex. I got three different sizes, two of each. I got two, this is one cup. I got two of these. I got four of the two cup and I have two of the, this is, I can't even remember. This is four cup. I very seldom use this. I'll use it to mix and then pour into the two cup, you know, but I've yet to use this in the microwave because it will take forever. Uh, and when I say forever, it usually takes anywhere from six to eight minutes to get your plastisol from a liquid to plasticize to 350 degrees, depending on how you do it. And I'll do a how to video uh, down the road. Matter of fact, I already got it. I just have to post it. I'm trying to get this one posted first because I don't want to do it backwards. I want to give you the information on how to get started first and what you should and should not do. So Pyrex cups. Now, I don't recommend that you get all three. You can get away with two of them because you got to have at least two if you're going to do laminate baits, meaning dual colored baits, uh, top one color and the bottom a different color. You're going to need two different cups. Okay. Safety is paramount. You're heating up plastisol to almost 400 degrees. That is a instant, I think a second or a third degree burn. So with that being said, this guy, if you look at it, it has spills on it where I've dripped hot plaster saw on it while I've had it on my hand. I use this one on my left hand and I draw and shoot with my right hand while I'm holding the injector. Okay. So I'm holding the injector with this hand and shooting with this hand. Okay. So make sure you get a good heat resistant glove. You know, um, you can buy the barbecue pit gloves. Uh, don't think that you can just get away with uh, a vinyl rubber glove or a cleaning glove. Make sure that that glove is heat resistant. 
uh, trust me, uh, if you go on Facebook, you go on YouTube, you'll see where people have, where they were not using gloves and the plastisol dripped onto their skin and it's an instant blister. Trust me. I've done it once. Uh, I haven't burned my whole hand, but I've burned my thumb. So please always wear a glove, heat resistant glove, big time. All right. Can't get, you can't, unless you're doing an open pour, uh, you can't get the plastisol out of the Pyrex cup after you heat it, uh, after you heat it up uh, without an injector. This is a nine ounce injector, and I think this is a six ounce, okay? So one thing I will say that I wish I knew before I bought these injectors, I bought all three at the same time. And the, the, the problem with these is if I push, there's no safety catch, okay? So when you buy your injector, make sure you buy your injector that you can actually put it on and lock it in place. Um, that way, when you go to expel all of the plastisol for the next shoot, you don't have to necessarily take it apart and pull out the leftover plastisol after it has solidified. Okay. Now, and that's a safety issue too, um, because if you're pushing down on your plunger, and you're in a you're in a mode it can possibly with the pressure that you put on it it can possibly pop out and all the plastisol can shoot out at you uh so it's never happened to me but i i really think that it's possible uh so when you buy your injectors uh buy the one now you're going to pay more money for it. Let's put that out there. These were cheaper uh, than the ones with the handle and the ones with the safety catch where you put it on and you lock it in place. Okay. Um, I probably need to upgrade, but I'm too far down the rabbit hole. Uh, and these are serving me just fine. Now I just have to do extra steps, you know, in between shoots in order to get ready for the next shoot. And I'll show you that in my upcoming video, um, but make sure you get a quality set. You know, uh, if you're gonna do dual injection, meaning you're gonna do laminate baits, you're gonna need two of the same size. That way you can do laminate baits. So, which is gonna bring me to the, the next one. So if you're gonna do laminate baits, you're gonna need a dual injector kit. Okay, now with this dual injector right here, this is the adapter that goes to the, the mode where you're gonna shoot two different color plastisol into a mold. They got triple modes, okay? Now you got the ones that will blend the the colors the two colors and then you have the ones that will separate the two colors like this one if i take this one apart you'll actually see two separate channels where the plastisol is going to go in and it's going to divide inside of the mold now depending on the mold whether or not you have a side by side mold or whether it will determine how you position the mold and how you shoot it okay so the kit comes with this clamp where one goes in on this side let's loosen that up a little bit one goes in on this side one goes in on this side you keep them even and then you tighten the wing nut and then this guy will bridge these two together it's just a little set screw allen set screw that will keep these so that way you shoot evenly into the mold of course i'm going to make some laminate baits on the how-to that way you can actually see it being done and i might even do it and you know 
do a cutaway so you can actually see me using this guy. Okay, it depends. We'll see. Either way it go, I'm gonna do a how-to. So it's all good. So I think this kit was like 50 bucks for, and it didn't come with injectors. It came with the the block. Um, the Well, I think they call it a blending block. Um, so this, I'll make sure I put the right name up. Uh, it comes with the blending block. It comes with the bridge and it comes with the clamp to clamp these two together and it was like 50 bucks but that was during um covid so i haven't checked the prices on these but i'll double check and if i can find the price i'll put it up there so um if you're going to do laminates um uh double colored baits dual colored baits however you want to put it uh you're going to need a laminating a laminating kit now okay understand that there are a lot more mold company, companies out there than they were when I started out. That's both a good thing and a bad thing, I guess, because the more information, it just confuses people and it gives you too many options. And with that, you spend a whole lot of time looking and searching. So, but thanks to Google AI, all you have to do is just pop it in the search and it'll populate the most popular and it'll give you prices based on what you're trying to get. Now, understand when you go out looking for these modes, you got you got modes where you got 10, okay? That's just a standard number. And then this mode, you got 20. And then you got a baby production mode where you got 30 okay so depending on what you're trying to do whether or not you're trying to crank out a whole bunch of baits uh at one time you know that means you're going to need a lot of molds you know and i recommend you getting the biggest injector that you can find that way you can do multiple shoots with one draw Okay. Now, with that being said, you're going to need a big enough Pyrex cup to hold that plastisol that you want to draw into the injector that you want to shoot into the mold. Okay. Now, if you're just doing it as a hobby, he, here, this is my recommendation. Know what you want. Okay. What you want, what you're going to fish with. You're not going to fish with 13 different sizes. 13 different types. If you're anything like me, I use three, 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 three sizes, meaning three, three modes. I use my Reaper Shad, my Baby Shad, and my Pintail Shad. Those are the only three I use, and the Stinger Tail. So I use four. Um, and I won't go over a two inch bait. Okay, so know what your, your, your favorite lake know what the crappie want okay so that way you're not buy i'm gonna put a picture of how many modes i got and i stopped because i realized that between me big play ray uh crappie fishing with drysdale mj fishing adventures my guy phil out in texas we all fish with different baits but we fish with the same bait and same colors consistently i fish with five colors at the end of the day with those five colors i can fish any body of water i can fish any color of water it doesn't matter whether it's muddy it doesn't matter whether it's clear stained or whatever i know those five colors are going to produce every time i go out without without a doubt so knowing what i know now i would have bought less molds in the beginning now if you're going to sell baits you need as many varieties as the market is demanding okay so you got to know your market because you can go to walmart right now and the same baits that were there on monday they're going to be there friday but then you can look at the racks and tell what's the most popular color what's the most popular size now i'm not saying that those colors are producing i'm just saying that's what the consumers are buying so 
I didn't do that type of research. I was just buying what I thought was going to work. So with that being said, you got Fisher, you got crappie fishermen in Texas that fish with three and four inch baits. You got crappie fishermen that fish in Alabama that use three and four inch baits. I'll never use a three inch bait to crappie fish here in Georgia. I just won't at the end of the day, because I know that my baby shad works and my pintail shad works. I'm at the two, the two inch mark and I'm at the inch and three quarter mark. It's not too small, not too big. Okay. So that's with that being said, know what size baits you want to produce. This is the inch. This is the tadpole. This is uh two inch. This is the baby tadpole, which is one inch. And this is the baby shad, which is an uh, inch and seven eighths. Okay. So this is my go-to bait right here. The baby shad. Okay. Um, I left the pintail shad and the other ones over there, but I'm going to make some baits and I'm going to show you how I use these. So right now I don't produce, but four size baits. Okay. Only four. I've reduced my, I had probably 36 colors with uh, laminates between lamin laminates and solids and clears. Okay. I, I wasn't using them and people weren't buying them, you know, because people only use what they see other people use or they use what they know work based on their experience. So with that being said, if it wasn't a popular color, people wasn't buying it. People wouldn't even asking about it. So know your market. Do not go out there and spend a lot of money on buying a whole bunch of molds that you're not going to use, or you're going to be making baits that you're going to end up remelting like I do, you know? So do your research on your molds. So what are some of the mold companies? You got Angle and AI, you got Epic Molds, you got fat guys, you got, um, my mind went blank, a do it modes. So I got, I got modes from do it. I got modes from angling AI. I got modes from Epic. Um, they're out there. Do the research. Uh, and some companies, some of their modes look similar and then some of their modes don't look similar. So, with that being said, know what your market is buying before you go out there and buy a whole bunch of molds. And if you're just making them for yourself, know what you want and buy what you need. Don't buy a whole bunch of stuff that's just going to sit on your shelf and collect dust. Because I got at least 15 molds over there that I don't even use. I don't even touch. I don't even look at. I know I'm not going to use them. So, so now that you've decided what mode you want, you got to have some kind of clamping system that's going to keep them nice and tight while you're shooting. Shooting your plastisol when you draw it out of the Py Pyrex cup after you melt it in the microwave and you're going to shoot it into the mold. You need some kind of clamping system that's going to keep the molds tight together. Now, they sell a system out there where... It's pressurized with the air, whether it, it closes and you release. Depending on how far down the rabbit hole you want to go and how many modes you got and how many modes you're shooting at one time, that's worth the investment. Okay. Now that's a good investment. Okay. So you got to get a return on your investment. So that means for every dollar that you spend buying the modes, buying the, uh, basically the hardware to do it, to make soft plastics, you got to recoup that. Okay. Understand. So that means sometimes you got to charge in order to get your money back. You can't just give the baits away. Okay. Now, if you're doing it for a hobby, this is what I recommend. Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon, however you want to get it. Okay. I'm a woodworker. So I had already had the clamps. So this is an extra long clamp. I think this one is 18 inches. So 
I can, I have two of these. I can put a line of clamps, I mean a line of uh, molds, and I can just use two clamps, okay? Now, the molds have to be the same height, almost the same height, and uh, the same depth, you know? The width is the block itself. I'm talking about how long the, uh, I wish I wouldn't have took the molds back, but I'll put it up on the whatchamacallit with, with uh, a clamping system. And I have the hand clamp, okay? Where you got the quick release. You gotta love it. Where you got the quick release and it's ratchet, okay? That don't mean that it's bad. I'm just saying it has a ratchet system. You hear it? I know how you young folks think. So, different brands charge different prices for the same clamp, okay? You can go out there, you can get a DeWalt, you can get a Milwaukee, you can get a Irwin, you, you can get whatever brand name you want, whatever floats your boat, whatever's in your budget at the end of the day, okay? Now, do I recommend getting to the pneumatic system where it's air pressurized and so forth and so on? Sure, why not? If you want to pay that upfront cost, that's all good. Whatever you think you need to do in order to make your baits consistent and whatever makes it easy for you to be able to make the baits get in and get out big time. Okay, and what's the other one? And this is the shorter one right here this guy it's the shorter version of this one so these as you can tell you see all the melted plastic on it these are the ones that i use all the time okay so clamping system decide what kind of clamping system you want to you want to get and how much you want to invest so some some miscellaneous things that you're going to need um because to keep your colors consistent, uh, remember I said you need a notebook, recipe book, okay? You're going to need measuring spoons, okay? They don't have to be metallic. You can go to the dollar store and get these, uh, okay? Um, just get a whole set, okay? Now, I took these from the CFO. Uh, she wasn't using them I mean, she doesn't miss them. At least I don't think she does. And hopefully she won't <laughs> watch this video. I'm diming myself out basically, but a good set of measuring spoons. Okay. And this helps keeps your colors consistent. And I mean that if you're just doing it as a hobby, it really doesn't matter, you know, because you're just making them to go out there to see if you can trick a fish to bite. That's it. But if you're selling them, you want to keep your colors consistent for your clients. OK, because that's what's going to keep them coming back. Consistency. Consistency is the key. You know, if your colors are all over the place every time they buy them, they're going to stop buying them from you, you know, especially if they're not people that you speak to, you know, um, most people just won't buy from you again, you know? So need something to stir your plastisol, you know, once it gets hot, before it gets hot and so forth and so on. Now, once again, dollar store, okay? Do not use wooden dowels, okay? Um, now you can use temperature resistant, high temperature plastic, Go with the metal, you know. Now, it's a lot of people out there because I've watched a lot of videos, okay? They say that the the butter knives are bad because you aerate the the plastisol, okay? He said you still need something to mix, okay? Now, you don't mix vigorously, you know. You mix enough to get the colors to blend and so forth and so on. So... I got these out of the kitchen, uh, but you can go to the dollar store and get these bad boys big time. So measuring spoon, butter knives, keep the cost down big time. All right. Before we get to the plastisol, 
because that's the most important part. Okay. Okay. To keep your colors consistent, I recommend staying with the same company that makes the colorant that you choose to make your baits with. It doesn't matter if it's bait plastics, it doesn't matter whether it's Calhoun, doesn't matter whether it's MF, doesn't matter whether it's Lure Works, doesn't matter whether it's dead on plastic. I'm not saying that if you buy the Plastisol from MF, you only use MF colorant. That's not true. Okay. Never saying that because it's some colors that other companies make that look different when you use them. So me, my colorants use dead on plastic. Okay. Colorant and keep your color palette simple. Okay. Because they got color shifting colorants where it shifts from brown to blue. And then you got your go-to Chartreuse. Sure then you got your char lime. Then you got your lime. Then you got your watermelon. Every company makes a different variation of every color that's out there. To keep your colors consistent, stick with the same company. So if you choose to use MF colorant, always use MF colorant. Okay? If you choose to use Lure Works colorant for certain colors, always use Lure Work color because they're different. Okay. The shades will come out different. And if you're just making them for yourself as a hobby, it doesn't matter. Okay. But if you're making them for the market, if you're making them to sell, stick with the same color from the same company that where your baits are consistent in color. Okay. I'm not saying one company is better than the next. I just know from experience, if I, I took a short video of all the colorants that I got up over there from maybe six or seven different companies, and I only use MF, Dead on Plastic, and Lure Works. That's it. Okay. So that's colorant. Okay. Your glitter. I don't care where you get your glitter from. They say you can use the glitter from Hobby Lobby. You can use the glitter from Walmart. Okay, there's a catch to that. You only want to use high temperature glitter, okay? That can withstand up to 400 degrees of heat because the if you're just using regular glitter that's plastic, that's plastic ba base and not polyester base, it's going to curl, okay? And it's going to basically melt on the inside of your plastic saw and it's going to change the color of your plastic saw and don't do it. So, same recommendation. I only use glitter from Lure Works. That's it. I know, I know the color number and I know the color size, you know, because you got, this one is the holographic hex. 0.04. Yeah, 0 0.040. Then you have this is from Lure Works also. This is the powder. This is the 0 0.008. Okay, depending on what your what kind of bait you're making and what kind how you want them to pop. Now, my pearls, I will actually I use bait plastic. Okay. Okay. I got I got, this is green pearl, I got blue pearl, I got white pearl, I got bronze pearl, you name it. I got a whole set of these and I don't use, the only two that I really, only three that I use is the white pearl, the green pearl, and the blue pearl, and the lilac pearl, violet pearl, I'm sorry. And heat stabilizer. I only use heat stabilizer from Lure Works. And I'm quite sure the formulas are all probably all the same at the end of the day. But this is heat stabilizer 4581 from Lure Works. This is what I, I've tried other other brands. And not only do they smell different, it makes the color 
of your plastics different. So same advice, whatever company you use for your heat stabilizer, always use that same. Okay. Now your worm oil, I use Lure, uh, Lure Works. Okay. Um, this is what I started out using. This is what I always use. This is what I use to clean my injectors. I use to clean my Pyrex cups. And this is actually, you can use it as a softener too in your Plastisol. Okay. So with that being said, know the uses for your worm oil. Because a lot of people don't know that if you have a harder, because you got crawl, you got... Different companies call their ranges of Plastisol different names, okay? I'm only familiar with dead on plastics because that's all I use, okay? So I use saltwater blend and I add a hardener to it at the end of the day. So if I want to have more action with my tails on my stinger tails, I can add some worm oil to it to soften it. Tricks of the trade, okay? Some extra additives that I use, you know, and I recommend that you use them too if you want to set your baits apart from what's already out there. Uh, and I'm not saying that everybody should use it or whatever, but if you're selling a product, you want your product to stand out, okay? The UV Glow resin, okay? Now, is it an extra step? It is. Do you have to tweak how much you put? You know, if it's a white bait, if it's a black bait, if it's a brown bait, if it's a yellow bait, chartreuse bait, lime green, you can't just dump a lot of this stuff into it, uh, especially if you're using clear baits. If you're going to use clear baits, this is going to cloud it up a little bit. Okay. But if you understand light penetration, UV light penetration and Clear water to stain water. It's all about the light penetration and whether or not that that crappie can see the bait. And with this, gives your base you give your bait an added edge, you know. Do I care if I tell you? No, because it's out there. You know, and if you do your research and you understand light refraction and UV light and fish and what they can see and what colors look at certain depths. You know, because pink is not pink at 10 feet and so forth and so on. I can go down the color palette. You know, some of the colors start to look the same the deeper you go. And understand that it's not tap water that we're fishing in. Now, if you're up north, yeah, that water gets crystal clear. Down here in the south, you're going to have some kind of silt. You're going to have some kind of algae. You're going to have some kind of plankton. Something's going to change the color of that water at the end of the day and your baits pop with this guy glow powder okay now you can't put it if you're if you're looking for super clear baits you don't want to use either one of these okay and you're just going to have your flake you know make the pop um once you put these in clear baits uh clear plastic salt it's going to cloud it up Okay, but I put this in all my baits. I put this in all my baits. So I just want them to work big time. If not for me, for the people that if I choose to sell them, I want them to work for them too. Now, then you have color shifting powder. Stuff ain't no joke, big time. And this is lilac and I love it big time. So do your research before you start making baits. So you know what colors you're going to make. So you know what color rents to buy. Okay. And know whether or not you're going to do laminates versus solid color because you certain colors will blend certain colors won't. Okay. Okay. Now, like I said, there are, a number of companies out there and I'm pretty sure there are companies where you can get a truckload of plastic haul if you want it you know 
Um, and but I'm a small guy. I'm buying the most I'm gonna buy at one time is five gallons. And it comes in a bucket just like that. Okay. Now, with that being said, how do I get it out of the five gallon bucket into my Pyrex cup or into my gallon jug? Now, do I, I was buying, it was cheaper to buy it in the gallons, you know, five, to buy five gallons of this and have it shipped in a box versus buying a five gallon bucket because the shipping for this was ridiculous at some point in time, you know, but I know five gallons will last me. If I don't sell any, it'll last me a whole year for all the baits that I got between me, big play Ray and the other people that I choose to give them to it'll, it'll last a full year. Okay. So I'll show you the apparatus that I use to get it out of the five gallon bucket into the gallon bucket okay, I'm into the gallon jug okay now all right like i actually use a transfer pump to get the plastic saw out of the five gallon bucket into the gallon bucket and then i just pour my plastic saw from the gallon bucket to my pyrex cup so i had already had one of these uh it's actually an oil transfer pump for re for refrigeration so I use it for my plastisol. So, but you can get a transfer pump uh, from Amazon. I think they sell them at Home Depot and so forth and so on. So now some people dip it, you know. One of the most important things that I didn't mention about the plastisol, even when you get it from whoever you buy it from, you still have to mix it. You know, you got to make sure it's thoroughly mixed. Um, so all the additives and the ingredients that's in the plastisol, you know, you got a good mixture before you start to heat it up. Because if it's not a balance of the ingredients, you, it's never going to plasticize like it's supposed to. Okay. Now, some people buy a vacuum pump in a vacuum chamber to vacuum their... Um, plastisol before or after they melt it for the bubbles now with dead on plastic there are some bubbles you know depending on um how much you stir and so forth and so on but what i've learned is if you let it sit for maybe a minute to two minutes and then uh let the bubbles rise to the top and then heat it up to 350 uh, again, majority of the bubbles are gone, you know. And I'm making small baits that you you can't, and small baits with glitter in it. You it, The only way you're gonna know that there's bubbles in it is if you're really looking for it, you know. The crappie don't care. They don't care. It, now, if you're making three, four, five, six inch bass baits, then yes, I recommend that you vacuum your plastisol so you can get all the bubbles out and you can make super clear baits and uh, bubble free baits and so forth and so on, you know, but for a two inch bait, you gotta really be looking for these bubbles big time. So transfer pump, like I said, I choose dead on plastic so i always use the salt water blend and that is the toughest blend that dead on plastic sells and i actually add a hardener to it okay now depending on what i'm making i will will dictate how much i put per cup or per gallon or per five gallon drum okay depending on uh what i'm trying to do okay so get in at get get in at the cheapest price point that you can get in at, you know, because you may not stick with it. But if you're if you know for a fact that you want to sell baits, go with the aluminum molds, you know, and spend the money 
to get the production modes. You know, don't get the small modes where you're only making 10 baits at a time. You know, get the production modes where you're making 20 up from 20 up to 30 at a time. That way that'll save you time in making baits. And you get what you pay for. Understand that, you know, do the research and buy quality materials. And with that being said, remember, you cannot catch them from the couch. So get up, get out, go fishing. Peace.